Hello and welcome to this quick tutorial on how we can make custom item types for Rucksack. So if we go to tools and then Rucksack main editor, we can create items here. And if we click the create items button, then we have different item types that we can create from. Um, but we can also include our own. So, our own. so let's, uh, let's do that right now. So I'm just going to create a new one in the devdoc demo folder and it's going to be a class and I'll just call it uh, my uh, item definition. So there's item definitions and item instances. The definitions contain all of the static information um, and the instances uh, behave so they do a certain behavior such as add a bit of health or equip to your character, that sort of stuff. So let's add this to the rucksack.demo namespace and for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to inherit from the uh, Unity item definition, which is a built-in type. So we can have a look at that. It has a parent, so you can chain them together. It has a GUID, unique GUID. It has a name, description, stack size, etc. So it's got some basic information, but if you want to start from scratch, you can do that. You can just implement the high unity item definition, or if you want to get even more bare bones, you can use the high item definition interface. Okay. So for now, let's actually just continue with the unity item definition, and we're going to let's say when the item is used, we want to restore a little bit of health. So we're just going to define some health. So I'm just going to serialize the field and we'll do a private int restore health. And I'm going to make a public accessor. So store health. And we're going to return. And instead of returning restore.health, we actually want to return this.getValue restore health. And what this does is that it actually uh, enables the chaining. So if we go quickly to the editor, you can see that we can assign a parent. And when we have a parent, whenever a field is the default value of that type, it will inherit from the parent. And using the this.getValue will actually enable that and do all of that for you. So make sure to use this.getValue and not return the direct value. Okay, so we have our item definition. So now let's create the item instance. Go. And again, I'm just going to inherit from Unity item instance for simplicity's sake. Let's have a look at that as well. So uh, the item instance has a reference to the item definition. It's got a layout shape, which again just grabs the value from the item definition, a stack size, and some use methods. So in the item instance, we can override behaviors such as to use. So this is called when we want to use the item. So let's see what the base class does. So the base class just returns a item used results, which it basically indicates that the action succeeded. Um, so it right now it doesn't do anything. So we can just continue to return it or write our own return method if we'd like. You can also override the can use method. So here you can verify if the item can actually be used in the first place or not. And you can return an error uh, in case something went wrong or the user doesn't have the right privilege to use it. Let's say that you want to restore health to one of your own components because Rucksack doesn't have a stat system built in. You can grab the character, which is the character that's using this item, and grab a component from the character, for example, and restore health on that. So let, let's just do that. So I'm just gonna say character, get component, health. We haven't created this yet, so we'll do that in a minute. So if this character is health, then we say health dot restore. Uh, and then now if we go to item definition, our restore health isn't here because item definition comes from unity item instance, which is a different type. And we just created our own item definition type. What we can do is create a new uh, accessor and then we'll just cast it inside the accessor. So we'll say my item definition, my item definition, get return a casted item definition type. And I will just use my item definition everywhere. Um, one more thing we have to do is create a constructor that will take a GUID and an item definition. And that's because the, um, the item factory needs to create an instance of this type. And it has to do that through the specific constructor. So we need to define, let's keep it protected so we don't accidentally initiate it. Uh, a constructor that takes a GUID and an item definition. 
and I will just call the base and that's it. So this constructor is needed for the for the item factory um, and it will throw an error if you don't define it. Okay, so we now have our type set up. It will restore health to our player or the character that uses this item um, and then return the result afterwards. So we have our health, we have our item definition, we have our item instance and the only thing we now have to do is bind it to our item factory. So I'm just going to call this my item factory. There we go. It's going to be a mono behavior and then we're just going to go to awake. Actually, we just do it in the constructor. And we'll say item factory dot bind, and then we're going to bind our. Let's just look at the intellisense. So we are going to bind our definition to an instance, which basically means that whenever we say I want a new instance of this definition type, it knows which instance to give us back. So we're actually going to say my item definition is linked to my item instance, and that's it. All we have to do is add this item factory class to some object in our Unity scene, so it always runs. Um, and now we can create new items and actually use them. As you can see, we already have a unit item factory attached here, which creates some bindings. So if I open this up, you can see that it creates some default bindings. Uh, in this case, we actually just want to keep those because they add the default bindings. We can just copy paste this and uh, attach it to our own factory and remove the built-in one, but we can also leave both. So I'm just going to add my item factory. So we have our my item factory, we have our default factory, and now we need to go to our player. Let's see. Player, and then we have our simple player here. With a bunch of components attached to it, and now we can add attach our health component that we created before, which indicates our 100 health. So now, when this character, so our player, uses the item, we will restore 100 health to our character, or we restore 10 health. So let's create the item. So I'm just going to go to Tools, Rucksack, Main Editor, and now we should see our new item type. There we go, my item definition. Create a new instance. Let's give it a name. Uh, we assign a sprite. Uh, let's just use the health potion here. Uh, the world model, we can use something like a cube. So when the object's actually in the world, what it would look like. So we can see a little preview. Restore health, let's say it restores 10. The maximum stack size, 10, some weights, etc. And the buy and sell price. So let's set that to gold. Uh, buy price five, sell three. Okay, so now we have the item, and we can actually add it to some object or give it to our player. So on our player, we do actually have, I think we have, no, we don't. Okay, so let's add it to one of those loot boxes for simplicity's sake. So we have the item collection generator. I'm just gonna add and then add our item. And we'll just add one of them. Okay. go, it's our item, just going to drag it to our inventory, right click it, and in our console it now says health restored to 110, which is our local player. Do keep in mind that the do use method runs on the server, so when the client requests to use this item, it will go to the server, the server will find the item on the server side, and then call the do use method. So keep in mind that this bit of code, if you're building a multiplayer game, is running on the server, so the server player has to have the health component. You can replicate it from there, so you can use syncvars or anything related to UNet, or if you use a different networking library, you can do that. But do keep in mind that you need to replicate it back to the client. 
Alright, that was it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below or join our Discord channel. The link is in the description.